We want to welcome Mike Williams from Lighthouse Ministries to come bring our word this morning. Thank you, Nathaniel. Good morning, everybody. It is great to be back with you folks. Some of you may remember last time I was here, I was on crutches. And this is my very first Sunday to be preaching without a leg brace on today. So I'm feeling good. Yeah, praise the Lord. Uh, I, I want to thank your wonderful worship team. Let me say this, I, I am at a different church somewhere around the country every week. Uh, not everybody has what you have. Could we give them a thank you today? Wow, praise the Lord. Thank you, Nathaniel. Great job today and worship team and, and band and everything. It's a good morning. We woke up this morning in the second best place we could have woke up. Take your time, folks. If you don't get that one, this is going to be a really long 30 minutes. <laughs> but think about that. We did. We did. Praise the Lord. My Jesus, I love thee. In mansions of glory and endless delight, I will ever adore thee. Wow. Praise the Lord. Father, today we give this morning to you. We give you the minutes of our life that we might become more like you next week. Father, we declare today that we love you. We declare today that without you we can do nothing. Father, we give you this time as an offering uh, to just say thank you for the lifetime the eternity time that you have given to us. And it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. For those of you, I'm going to do a, a quick commercial here to begin with. Uh, for those of you who were here during our comedy night, twice a year in this area, Lighthouse does a comedy event. We have one coming up at, at, uh, at First Baptist Church of Plant City. And if you're interested in coming to that, this is Friday, uh, August 25th. It's coming up in three weeks. There's a poster in the back for you. It's absolutely free. We will have David Pendleton. David Pendleton is the guy who's replaced Mark Lowry on the Gaither tour, by the way. Is, nobody knows who they are. Okay, beautiful. I've connected with my crowd today. Uh, shall we go back to the Perry Como special? Uh, <laughs> Uh, and, and also we have, uh, uh, we have Paul Aldrich from Nashville, Tennessee. He's done a lot of stuff with the Gaithers, although he's not the replacement for Mark, but he'll be there. I'll be there. A couple other comedians. You'll want to be there for it. I, I, hope, you're, I hope you come out there. I, I will be there that day. Uh, you might notice that my voice does not sound normal today. If you're meeting me for the very first time, normally I have a very uh, stout, uh, deep preaching voice, uh, but today I don't, and that's because I spent the summer in the Dominican Republic. That's where I spend most of my summers working with a mission down there, and I did real well all summer until two weeks ago. I was getting ready to fly out, and the day before I flew out, I went to visit a guy that they told me he had dengue fever, okay? I've had dengue fever before. In fact, the dengue fever is what started all my heart conditions years ago. So I went out to visit the guy with dengue fever, only to find out that it wasn't dengue fever, it was COVID. I don't know, have you heard of that? Did you guys have that here in Kathleen area? I don't know how it affected you guys up on the north side. Um, and so the very next day, I started uh, coughing and wheezing, and this is what is left over from it. And so uh, if I sound a little rough today, uh, just forgive me for that and, and get over it, get over it. And, and that's what I'm trying to do too. Today we're going to be asking uh, the question uh, that, that stems from the screen right up there, letting God be unpredictable again. I, I, I have to admit that I, I like the Lord better when he's very predictable. I don't like God when he gets out of the box that I have put him in. It, it's so much easier to deal with theologies and trainings and doctrines and denominations when God stays the way that he has always been. And we know that he is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen? And so what we know of that is that God is always changing the way he does things. 
that his, his way of staying the same is that he's always unpredictable. And when I learn that, I will see him more and more because I am open to allowing him to be unpredictable. We're going to be in Mark chapter 2. Go there if you would. I'm going to pull out my reading glasses here, which are available for only $2 on Amazon and Prime. Mark chapter 2, when Jesus had come back to Capernaum, uh, it was heard that he was at home. He was in a house. Verse 2, and many, everybody say many. many. We're get, now, now, when I say everybody, um, that means everybody, okay? It's a new word. We're going to add this to the language today, okay? Everybody say many. many. Oh, that sounded great, folks. You are awesome. We're gathered together that there was no longer room, not even near the door. Wow. That was a lot of people. When was the last time you came to something that was church-related that there was a situation like this? It's been a long, long time for me. Um, and it says that he was speaking the word to them, okay? So Jesus is speaking the word to them. You see that in verse 2? He was speaking the word to them. And verse 3, and they came. Now the they here is going to be described a little bit toward the end of the verse there. And they came bringing to Jesus him a paralyzed man, a paralytic carried by four men. So the they is four people right there, okay? And they came bringing to Jesus a paralytic. A par when, when you think of the word paralyzed, what do you think of? Think of someone who can't move. Think of someone who can't get around. Think of someone who, who may be con confined to a wheelchair. Uh, I worked with a fellow this summer uh, who uh, has, has no legs. He was born without legs. You know, you think of, you think of uh, the, the incapacitated, uh, not able to do normal things, the paralyzed man, and we know he must have been in a situation where he was paralyzed to the degree that he couldn't walk. Why do we know that? He was carried by four men. Let's go to the next verse. And when they could not get near him, Jesus, because of the crowd... I like what the King James says. I don't know if you grew up with King James. I grew up with King James. I've memorized over 600 verses in the King James, okay? So forgive me if I don't speak your language. Uh, if you don't know what the word thee means, see me afterwards. And when they could not get to Jesus because of the crowd, the King James says, when they could not get to Jesus because of the press, Nathaniel. Because of the press, that's what it says in the King James here. Some of you may have that in your Bible right now, it, it, press. And when I read that the first time, I thought, wow, even back then, the news media was trying to get in the way. And when they could not get to Jesus because of the crowd, they headed up onto the roof. Wow. Now, I, I see this in my mind. I see them getting down to our friend's house and um, convincing their friend who is paralytic that Jesus could meet his needs. Convincing him that today would be maybe the day that, that God would move in your life. Maybe today would be the day that things changed. L let me tell you, there's one thing to be sick there's one thing to have hurt your leg, but there's another thing to have a brand put upon you that says that you are paralyzed. Do you understand what I'm saying? He had been marked. He had been identified. The verdict was in. He was paralyzed. And they go down to his house and they convince him that Jesus could meet his needs. And they gather around his cot and they head down to uh, Jesus and uh, all of a sudden they reach that place where they realize that Jesus is up there in the house, but there's no way to get there. Uh, growing up here in Florida, I'm, I'm immediately thinking of back in the day when we used to go to Disney World before Fast Pass. Do you remember those days? And, and you'd be in this long line, long, long line, and you think we're never going to get in. And then 
finally you'd walk through those initial doors to Space Mountain and you'd be so excited and then it would say there'll be a one hour wait from this point oh and they could not get to Jesus because of the crowd the press and somebody says hey I got an idea he was from Jersey that's a northernmost province just shy of Tel Aviv follow me and all of a sudden the bed gets twisted around they're going down a side street a back alley up onto a neighbor's house that had access to the roof they're crossing over house to house you know the paralytic had to be a little bit scared too I mean he's he's hanging on to the bed with all of his life right there his friends are getting across and the next thing you know there they are on top of the house that Jesus was inside speaking And in my mind, I can picture this. They're kind of going, what what, what are we doing up here? Jesus isn't up here, okay? He's in the house. You just wait a minute. Wait there. Chainsaw, chainsaw. (laughs) I'm not real good with impersonations. I just wanted to. (laughs) And all of a sudden, he cuts a hole in the roof. Now, if this were me, I was raised in the church. I'm a church guy. I was a pastor at one time. Can you believe that? I know I I pastored for almost two and a half weeks. But... I'm going to be up there with him going, Stop! We can't do that! We've never done it that way before! That one never gets a lot of laughs because it's so true. And all of a sudden, this roof is broken up. Finish the verse. And when they had made an opening... If you read it in the original language, this wasn't a a, a, a skylight. This wasn't a roof hatch. It literally says, when they broke it up, everybody said broke, broke. There was damage done. When they broke it up, they lowered down the mat. Man was lying on, which I don't even know how to picture that, but I picture that they strung a rope around his leg and just let him down. You know what I'm saying? Go to the next verse. And all of a sudden, we've got this here. Can you imagine today? (laughs) Let's not even go there. And when Jesus saw their faith, hmm, I'm just going to blurt this out, and I'll let you work out the theology of it later with your staff. When Jesus saw their faith, because I've heard people say, if you just had enough faith, you'd be healed. I want to say, according to Mark chapter 2, if you just had enough faith, I'd be healed. Shut up. (laughs) Sorry, just a little side note. Just wanted to bring that up. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. Now, why would he say that? Maybe it's because at that day and age, in that time, they believed that if you were sick, if you had a malady, if you had a deformity, you weren't allowed in the church, okay? Because the reason you were broken was because God was punishing you. God was punishing you for something that you did, or your dad did, or your granddad did, or your great-granddad did. So Jesus dealt with their cultural perspective He said, son, your sins are forgiven. They go to the next verse there. I'm going to use the screen too. It's better than the glasses. Now some of the scribes were sitting there, reasoning in their hearts, questioning in their hearts. (laughs) 
Why does this man speak like this? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? I love that part. I love that. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Yes! Who can forgive sins? Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus can. Go to the next verse. Uh, Verse 8 gives us a little insight to what's happening here and why the Pharisees didn't like Jesus. Because it says here, Jesus perceiving in his spirit that they reason this within themselves, he says unto them, these people who were questioning this, he says, why do you question these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins be forgiven, or to say, rise, take up your bed and walk, Verse 10, but that you may know. Ooh, these things have I written that you might know that you have passed from death unto life. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. Now let's stop here for just a second, and let's just kind of back up in our mind. Why didn't they like Jesus? because he knew what they were thinking. We don't like people who know what we're thinking. I don't like people who know what I'm thinking. I don't like it when my wife knows what I'm thinking. She doesn't like it. (laughs) Do these jeans make my butt look fat, honey? Arise, take up thy spanks and walk. (laughs) I just thought of that. (laughs) Sorry, sorry, Nathaniel. I was trying to be very pastoral today and stuff like that pops out. You know, I'm not trying, it just, it happens. Like a Freudian slip, boom, you just... You know what, I've told you before, I'll tell you again, Freudian slip is when you don't want to say something, but you blurt it out anyway, you, accidentally. It's just because your mind, I had that happen at Thanksgiving a couple years ago. I meant to say pass the potatoes, and I said, I hate you, you ruined my life. But uh, <laughs> So we can understand why, we can understand why They wouldn't like Jesus. We like to be able to contrive secretly. Let's go back to verse 11. I say to you, pick up your bed and go home. Verse 11, go to verse 12. And he rose and immediately picked up his bed. (laughs) Immediately picked up his bed. And went out before them all. There he was, out before them all, so that they were all amazed and they glorified God and they said, say with me, we never saw anything like this. Woo. There you have it. Um, as I told you, I'm Baptist. I'm Southern Baptist, which is, which is Baptist with an accent. I know that uh, in my church, uh, we had somebody years ago who came through the roof. Uh, It was an air-conditioned man who was up there working um, 
on an air conditioner. I'll tell you where it was. It was at the old Webster Memorial Baptist Church. How many remember Webster Memorial right across from Kathleen High School? And Dr. David Drake, who is, uh, for, who is now the uh, uh, DOM up in Fernandina Beach area, was preaching. I, I, was, I was young. I was, I was a minister of music. It was my, I was 17 years old. I was excited. I, I, was, I was getting paid, a paid job, $12 a week. And, and it was, hey, that was good money back then. Okay. Uh, <laughs> with inflation, that's like 142 right now. Okay. So there I was sitting there, and, but there was a drip coming down right in front of, and, and one of our air-conditioned men who went to the church decided that he was going to fix it during the service and he went up there and you could hear him coming down the rafters of the church boom 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 and I don't know what the pastor was talking about because I'm just listening to the boom 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 and all of a sudden one of his feet missed one of the rafters and that was back, we, we had those, those uh, things, I, that real thin cardboard type of, his foot came through, okay, is what happened. And he shouted a word that was rarely heard uh, <laughs> in church. Uh, but that day it was. And, and so when I picture this story, I picture that today. And I wonder if today, I wonder if for some reason the building was full and the crowd was out there. I wonder if all of a sudden we saw dust start to fly and all of a sudden somebody's ripping a hole up there. I'll tell you what I would do. I would go, stop! We don't do it that way. Wait for the second service. Now is not the time to come through. It's not the invitation time. You wait to the end. And perish the thought. Go to that next slide, brother. No, I think it's the next one. It's a good question when you think about it. Who pays for the roof? We, we've got damage, right? It's got broken up. You know, I, 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 I begin to question in my mind, because it doesn't say here, so it's open to our interpretation. Your guess is as good as mine, but mine's better. Because it's mine. I, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about this. Maybe, maybe, maybe the four guys that brought him Maybe they chipped in the money, they were excited, they paid for the roof. Maybe three of the guys looked at the guy from Jersey and said, you brought the chainsaw, <laughs> pawn the chainsaw, pay for the roof. Maybe it was the guy that got healed, right? There's a guy that gets healed, right? Let's not miss that, okay? Forgiven and healed, woo! Maybe he jumped up and he said, wow, I, I can carry my bed, I can walk, I can work, I'll take care of your roof. Maybe... Maybe it was Jesus. He was a carpenter. Maybe he said, don't sweat it. When this is over, me and the guys will go out to the truck. I got stuff. We'll do that. We'll float the drywall. To my one construction guy who understood that. Here's what I, here's what I do know. It doesn't say who paid for the broken roof. We have a broken roof. But I can promise you this, when people come to faith, it's because somebody is willing to pay for the roof. When missions take place around the world, it's because somebody was willing to put aside something that they wanted in turn to give life to someone else. This is the essence of who we are. It's the essence of who we are as a people, who we are as a church. Now, now, this is a, a message, so it's a sermon. So while, while it's encouraging, it's also a contemplatory in a sense that we, we need to think. So I ask us to go to the next slide. I'm going to ask this question. If you were there, well, let's change it. 
If that story were moved to 2023, Kathleen, Florida. I love Kathleen. We have a traffic light and everything now. Hey, you laugh. I remember when we didn't. Okay. If it was the story today, would you find yourself in the story or would you find yourself in the jury? I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I probably would have been in the jury. Nathan, I, I grew up in the church. I know how it's supposed to be done, and I know that's not the way we're supposed to do it. I know that culturally, my way of doing things is the godly way. And I probably would have been in, in the jury, figuring out reasons why it shouldn't happen this way or couldn't happen this way, or won't happen, or even perish the thought that I went this far as to go, that's not of God. Hmm. In seminary, I was taught to believe that blasphemy of the Holy Spirit was attributing things of God to things of the devil. Ouch. Folks, be careful saying, that's not of God. It's interesting that even one of the angels chose not to accuse the devil. He said, the Lord rebuke you. Are you in the story? I'll tell you what I want to be. I want to be one of the four. I want to be one that's bringing folks in. I want to be one that's involved in life change. Uh, I, I, listen to this these guys knew Jesus better than all of them because they had seen his power work in front of them through them and with them I want to be one of the guys in the story in fact I'd like to say I'd, I'd like to be the guy with the chainsaw but I'm not a fan of people from New Jersey no offense if you're from New Jersey. Forget about it. Okay. No. But I don't know that I've got that much faith. But I want to be in the story. Folks, I want to challenge you. Be in the story. Be involved in the story. You know, there's going to be lots of things that are going to happen over the course of our life as culture changes. And we're finding that God works in every culture. Let's be careful not to be so judgmental. And let's be careful to open up and say, God, whatever you're doing, however you're doing it, I'm on board with you. I'm on board with you. One more, one more slide. And we'll go home. Hope you don't mind getting out early. Okay, I'll go longer. Do we need to go over word definitions again? <laughs> Thank you, brother. Appreciate my son coming this morning. <laughs> what steps can we take to see the move of God in our life? What's it going to take for us to truly be your next step takes you to your mission field? For me, it's often going to take me just saying, Lord, yes to your will and to your way. I don't always know that. I don't always understand it. But here am I. Send me. I tell you, I, I love praying with people at, at, at uh, restaurants. That, that's, that's one of my ways of loving people. I just, when the, when the waitress comes, my family, we tend to just go, uh, hey, in just a minute, we're going to pray over our food, and uh, maybe you have a need in your life, we can pray for you. Folks, I can't begin to tell you how many people have just stopped and started bawling at the table. People are looking around like, boy, they're horrible customers. But a way to minister to their life. 
Last week, I uh, stood before a man who uh, somebody asked him about his son, and he said, three years ago, my son died. And he froze. And I realized that here was a man who had mourned the loss of his son for three years. And uh, this was tough. I'm a man. I don't do stuff like this but either. And I just walked across the room and I threw my arms around him and he just started sobbing in my arms. Just started sobbing. I, I don't mean crying. I'm talking about sobbing. And I don't mean just like 30 seconds. You, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an American male. You hug me for more than, you know, about 15 seconds, I question you, okay? Uh, you know, we, we normally like, hey, bro, pull it in. Okay, now move back. Probably close to five minutes. Broken man. I told him the story of David losing his son. And um, I told him the story where David says, uh, though the boy can't come back to me, I can go to the boy. I said, Victor, your son made a profession of faith with me 12 years ago. I know where he's at. What are you going to do? And he prayed one of the most amazing prayers. He prayed, he prayed, he said, God, forgive me for being mad at my son, for being so stupid and getting to that accident. And God, forgive me for being mad at myself, for letting my son drive. And God, forgive me for being mad at you. Wow. Come into my heart. Folks, it was uncomfortable for me. But God did a miracle. And he's ready to do that with any of us. I want to encourage you. This week, what step can you take to break open the roof and get somebody to Jesus. How can you pray? How can you love? How can you serve? How can you mow a lawn to bring somebody to Jesus? Nathaniel, what's our closing song? We're going to... I love you, Lord. Very good. Come on up here. Come on up. I'm going to pray and then you're going to sing. And as you sing today, I ask that you would ask that question. What can I do this week? God may not reveal it to you today, so what do you do? You turn around and you say, Lord, whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do. Why? Because we love him. Why? because we love him. Hope to see you at our big comedy event. There's brochures in the back. Hope to see you around town here in Kathleen at the stoplight or Walmart where we all gather for a weekly vigil to buy more t-shirts. But most of all, I hope you, I see you again right here in church. Thank you for allowing me to be with you today. Heavenly Father, you are good and you are great. And we are honored when you visit us. We are honored when you uh, step outside of our normal box and you show up in our lives. Father, we love you. We stand before you. We want to stand before you having done all that we could. Having ripped up a whole lot of stinking roofs to 
see people transformed by your power. Father, forgive us for being the jury instead of players on the team. We commit our lives to doing better in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching this week's sermon from Kathleen Baptist Church. For those that are in our faith family, we hope we can see you again soon. If there is any way we can serve you or pray for you, please contact us at the church office at 863-858-3836. For those not in our faith family, thank you so much for watching today. We would love to connect with you and hear from you to see if there is any way we can pray for you or serve you. We have life groups available for your family to plug into. You can contact us by calling the church office at 863-858-3836 or by going to our website, KathleenBaptist.com. There you can learn more about who we are, find resources for you and your family, see our upcoming events, and watch more of our sermons. We hope you will join us again next week for our service.